This is a story of two ambitious dairy farmers and their attempt to carve out a living in the competitive post-World War II market of toy glass marbles. Unbeknownst to them at the time, they were producing among the most collectible vintage machine-made marbles in United States history. With high aspirations and a second-hand alley agate machine, Burl Wilson and Wilson Davis chase the American dream. This is Davis Marble Works. We're back with Ron Shepard and we've got a little lot of really hard to find Davis marbles. So what can we say about these rarities? Uh, Davis these marbles. These are may, maybe the rarest of the West Virginia swirls. No? To me, just about the rarest machine made swir machine made marbles there is, period, swirls or anything else. And the reason why is because the company was so short lived, it was run by a father and a son and 95% of the production went to Puerto Rico. It didn't even stay in the United States. They're not real eye catchers, not real bright, but if you go to try to find them, they are probably fine because most of them went to Puerto Rico. But the lucky thing is there's only about 12 or 14 at the very most variety of com com color combinations. Right. If you learn those, it's, you can do it. Yes. Each show I find one or two. Mm -hmm. That's how many, I just looked at two today. Okay, so, so they're out there. So they're out there. and. <laughs> And Wilson Davis gave a talk at the Caro show at the hardware store several years ago. He's passed away now. And he explained about making them and uh, was wondering what happened to all the marbles. And he explained he went to Puerto Rico and why. Uh, because they were having trouble selling them because Jackson and Playwright and everybody else got into business. They couldn't sell them. Okay. So they got a, made a deal with a toy manufacturer, toy broker in New York City. And he made a deal. It was a doll company that was selling dolls. He made a deal with Davis to take all the marbles, and they were selling the dolls mainly in Puerto Rico. And they were given a bag, a mesh bag, of the marbles away if you bought the doll. The doll. So the marbles were free. Oh, cool. So if you ever get a chance to go to Puerto Rico, <laughs> look for a red mesh bag. Yeah. Like this, red mesh bag. Yeah. Which yeah. says Davis Marble Works, and you will have a prize. No That's one has insane. ever seen one. Here's a lucky lot of mint Davis marbles found at an estate sale in Tennessee. These were originally owned by a serviceman stationed in Puerto Rico between the 1940s and the 1960s. And for marble hunters, it's proof positive that if you're in the right place at the right time, you can realistically stumble upon a rare Davis score. We'll get into the marbles real quick here. And you can see a lot of red and whites. And okay. Back we're again with the ivory. Dirty white cream colored vitrolite colored, and it's probably sheer, but Playwright and Jackson, they, they will glow. Uh, any of the red and white ones here will glow just like those do in Carol Novelty. And, and Jackson, Carol Novelty, and Davis is most likely if you got these. Now, I'll give you a little bit of secret on separating them. It's not 100%, but the majority of the, ja the Davises, you see, are more orange okay. than red, and they got more fine lines and not as wide. That's the thing. Their, their swirls are cooler looking. Yes. They're, um, You'll find a you, few. You see these patterns yes. here? Yeah, that's Davis right there. Right. Yeah, you, you get into the wide swirl. You got a few there. in here. They're just, you know, you can't say 100% marbles. This looks right. like a Jackson. This more orange looks like a Davis. Looks like a Davis. Looks like you pick out the yeah. more orange ones. Yeah. And the thinner lines, you got a lot better chance of being Davis. Here's a, an example of those, those fine mm -hmm. lines. On the yeah. orange and white. They're really most, the majority of theirs are orange and white. There's a few right. red and white, yeah, but the majority are, of them you can see in this yeah, case. Yeah, there's a red and an orange next to you each know, other. You know, if you was digging yeah. these, up, you, you will find more orange than you will red. Okay. If you get in the reds, you got a maybe 50 50 chance, but odds are you probably made jack. But if it's orange, your best odds is with Davis. The easy one for Davis, it's pretty easy, is what I call, and we know what to use, was the Coke bottle glass. Okay. The brown is vitrolite, same company called Brown's Vitrolite. It's pretty common in a lot of companies, but this green is Coke bottles. I see. We dug the Coke bottle glass. Oh, no other okay. company comes real close to that. That green, it's that particular brown. Distinctive. Just, I call them the Coke bottle Davis. I see. Coke and those are Davis. pretty easy to pick out once you get one or two and start spotting them. You get them in a group, big group marbles, you can pick because those bases, it's a little bit like the brown Ravenswood base, but it's just a little bit off and yeah, did uh, do that green. Yeah, it's flesh colored, right? Mm -hmm. So those are all from the greens from the Coke bottle. So those are pretty unique to Davis. Once you learn those, you can pick them up. Mm -hmm. And these, not really cat eye, 
They're just twisted inside. A lot of people at first glance, you think it's a cat eye in this snap, but it's just a little bit twisted inside. Right. And if you find that, some's twisted heavy, some's twisted them a lot more lighter. It's clear base, but they look yellow, but it's because of the yellow inside. Okay. And if they're Davis, they're going to glow orange. You know, um, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, uh, Sammy had a bunch of these with a little orange in it, in this yeah. world, a yellow and orange color combination. And that That's battery, our batteries are about gone, so they should glow orange. Okay. Uh, and the flesh colored ones. Oh, yep. Ravenswood and a lot of other companies made flesh color marbles. Ravenswoods are a little lighter, a little darker. You get different shades of snap, but the key on Davis is that white will glow. It's the same white, a bit of light. Okay. The, the swirling in these will glow, and the Ravenswoods champions do not. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. And they they have the the lavender swirl on the on the green, right? Or, yeah, mm -hmm. or blue. And these are thicker. Right. Uh, the lavender's wider. Swirls. And right. It's less blue. Right. And some of them, yeah, less blue than what the Jacksons are. Yeah, yeah, these are, are familiar from this morning when I was looking at them. That's it. Once you, once yeah. you get a few of them and see them, yeah. then you can, you, can, you can start picking them up. Now, this is a whole different purple. See how dark yeah, it is? Yeah, this is, uh, I, I'd seen, this almost looks opaque to me. I yeah, couldn't tell. It's, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you know what? Let me uh, yep. take a picture of that right there. Get up here on this wood, you got a better background. Get the blue, blue that's with it. And there should be some more in there. See, here's a. That's a nice lavender. Oh, that's cool. It's almost clear. Yeah, that's nice. And that's your. Another. That's the difference, is in. You go from just a little bit blue, blue greenish base, almost to clear to opaque. Yeah. A light green. Mm hmm. Let's put the Jackson. That's a little more. Oh, uh, it's uh, each marble is different. Yeah, you can't really generalize, but hard to pick that out of the lineup. But blue. Right. Oh. Oh, okay. okay. I see. You got it. It's the same lavender, but it everything really else is. is different. It totally is. Yeah. Here's the Davis. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty much clear base with the lavender. A lot of little bubbles. Mm -hmm. And then you have a transparent, really transparent, light green base with the lavender, purple. Yep. And you have opaque, purple, and blue. Okay. And you compare that to Jackson. Same swirl color. Same lavender, but you have a transparent uh, blue base. Is. Yeah. And that's Jackson. Right. And then these are unique to Davis. Yes. Yep. And these are... Uh, Really, an opalescent, foggy base with mm -hmm. very fine line, mm -hmm. blue lines in them. Some of them get a little more white. It looks a little more opaque, but they're not a little more white than the others. Some mm -hmm. got a little, a little more blue, brighter blue than others. These Sometimes you, confused with ja uh, champion. Almost always. Let's riff on a few other known Davis collections just to get a better feel for their general color palette and traits. American Machine Made Marbles author Mike Johnson has provided some crisp, clean group shots here of the marbles and cullet he collected from the historic Davis dig in the spring of 2002. And as a whole, you can notice an even distribution of one swirl color inside and at the marble surface with a good swirl definition and busy winding patterns which are most apparent in the transparent based examples. Mike has Davis documents showing receipts from the Gabbert Cullet Company, which was a glass dealer out of Williamstown, West Virginia, who was shipping glass to Davis and some of the other area marble companies at the time. Gabbert is still in operation today. Stop by and say hi. All right, guys, here we are at Sammy Hoag's, and we're going to check out the largest Davis collection probably known to exist. And he has them sitting in an old glass jar. He came his dad's experience with you know, making marble, and he didn't make them long, and nobody helped him. And he was never going to tell the story. Um, but he he ended up coming to our show several times, and well, he let and told, he let us go and take it. Yeah. So, Cindy, can you hit these with a the black light and see? Let me come in. Let me out and probably light up. Maybe we'll light up. Let light up. These were all dug at Davis? 
Yes. All right, Sammy, you dug these yourself? Uh, well, <laughs> Rick and Rick them day, and I was over with them. <laughs> I dug a little bit. So, you know, and these, you know, and, and these are what, you know, Ron Shepard says are Carol Novelty, or are the ones that care novelty, Ron Shepard thinks Ron got that, that they cool. came yeah. from Davis. They, maybe. they came Ron from Davis. Davis. Ron was up there. He, yeah. he, he was out there that day we dug him. Them guys dug a hole there big enough you put a Volkswagen car down. See, <laughs> really? There's a nice transparent cobalt I, blue. I, them, them the, I got two or three gallons, but I just sorted through them. They were, they were pretty junky, you know. I picked the best ones out of the I see. And pumping it your Here's a yellow. Yeah. I mean, wow. I, 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 wow, Sammy, wow. I want to say that these yellows are different than Carol's. I had about that many of them play right marbles, too. I've, I've got some in trays here someplace, but I don't know where they're at. But, you know, around here, if I, if I find these marbles, well, like them are green and white ones like you, yeah. The Jackson not find one around here. Every yard, every yard around here's got marbles out. Well, and you'd be surprised. I found found several. Now, of course, I never find Clarksburg marbles. I right. found a few cards, but basically, I find right around here. I find alley marbles. Huh. And uh, I have I found a few uh, playwrights. I know what they look like. So I, you know. Oh, is that vitrolite? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look at that. Uh, you know, with that red yeah, stripe in yeah. there, you I've never That's... seen. I've never seen it. There's nothing like that. They, just, they were just. They were just. They didn't have anything to work with. And they just get whatever they could get. I see. As far as raw materials. Yeah. It's call it. Where's that black line? Look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it's just a beautiful marble. You see these, did you? Did I ever show these to you? Well, we picked through these like kids in a candy store for probably over an hour. What I was most impressed with were these lavender swirls on a deep syrupy cobalt blue base. And only when you backlight them hard can you see their translucency. What was missing from all the Davis collections that I saw were transparent oranges, reds, and aqua-based marbles. And from talking to those who had dug there, there was little to none in any representation of any standard white collet. No cold cream jars, no opaque white milk glass were to be found on site. Here's some photo sets of Sammy's collection. These have been in this case since after they got washed and dug. Same with that. And that's about every variety Jackson found. <laughs> so. There was three people, myself, Rick Ryan, and uh, Greg Helmick. Greg passed away a few years ago. Talked to Mr. Davis Wilson and his father, his father passed away. They were the two, they run this 24 hours a day and there's two people. And one machine. One machine. So we talked to him. We knew where the factory said it was long gone. A tornado ripped it down years ago. This now I never got to see it. I got pictures of. It. We what talked. town was Davis? It's right outside of Pensgrove. Oh. Outside, outside a little ways out in the country. It was on a farm. They had a oh. dairy farm. Oh. So now it's in a pasture field. There's nothing there but okay. a pasture field. So we pleaded and begged, and every time we was that direction, I was with this man for two and a half years. Let us dig him up. No, I said, we know where, yeah, you know, you know where they're at. Let's dig them up. No, you're not going to tear our pasture field up. Them marbles aren't worth anything. What do they look like? He didn't remember. He had no idea. He couldn't tell you what color any of them was. He didn't remember it been so long. He said, they're not worth anything. So it was about somewhere two and a half, three years. I would stop maybe every other month, six times, four to six times a year, and talk to him and his wife and his net, and, and uh, he just wouldn't give over and then, Rick and Greg called me one day and said, we got permission to dig the Davis site. Wow. So they told him that we would dig it, and when we got done, he wouldn't be able to tell we were there. So when we dug it, 
We took the saw, we took the saw shovels and took the saw off about four inches in squares. We laid tarpaulin out, put it out in two foot squares. The way we took it out, took the marbles out, put it all oh. sawed back and we took a roller and rolled it down. And you resawed it like, like a good boy Put the boy original scout. sawed right back. So this took a few weeks. Sammy Hug was over to dig for a day. Mike Johnson stopped by one day and that was about it. But uh, they made up a Riker case this size of his marbles. Now, he couldn't remember what they looked like, I hadn't seen them or anything else, not what he was digging. He didn't even come out. So we presented that case with him full all we could get oh, in. Nice. And this guy had tears down his eyes. Oh, wow. what a treasure. So, yeah, that's cool. Cool story. Well, thank you, Ron Shepard. I appreciate yep, it. A, Thanks for sharing the data. Need story more details? Check out American Machine Made Marbles that get into real depth if you really want to search for them and get, to, get all the detailed history. That's a good reference for it. And, Keep looking at this video, keep looking at these pictures, and you'll... Yeah, we're going to do some great close-ups. It'll, uh, it'll make more sense the more you look at right. it. We'll include some of Sammy's stash.